baby girl Venice, symbolically the 8 billion person in the world, was born on Monday at uh, Dr. Jose Fabella Memorial Medical Center in Manila. And this is according to the Commission on Population and Development. Now, statistically, uh, more than half of uh, that 8 billion people uh, who's uh, uh, presently uh, the case uh, have direct access or uh, heard the message of uh, the cross, uh, the gospel. But sadly, only a fracture of that number understood and fully realized the value of what our Lord Jesus Christ have done on the cross of the Calvary. So aside from the unreached, there are those who lack understanding and true meaning of gospel, which was not only the case or the issue of our generation. Rather, it was apparent during the apostolic times. Uh, even uh, the very saints were dissuaded to uh, the other gospel uh, during at the time of the Apostle Paul. So let me read you the passage that we will gonna look after this afternoon, uh, which can be found in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, from verse 7 until uh, 12. So let me read to you Galatians 5, 7, and 12. You are running well, who hindered you from obeying the truth, this persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven, leaven the whole lamp. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view, and the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever, is, whoever he is. But if I, brothers, still preach circumcisions, Circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross have been removed. I wish those who unsettled you would emasculate themselves. So this is Paul's another appeal to the Galatian believers not to abandon the gospel as he uh, first mentioned on the uh, previous verses, oh sorry, chapters. In chapter 3, verse 2, he said, Let me ask you on this. Did you receive the Spirit by the work of the law or by hearing it with faith? And then on chapter 4, verse 9, he again says, But now that you have come to know God, or rather, to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principle of the world. Those slaves you want uh, to be once more. So, the writing of the apostle serves as a guide to these uh, believers on that time, a guide uh, to get them back on track, we may say. A call for discernment is always encouraged by the apostle, as they are commonly maligned, misquoted, or misrepresented by these false teachers. As for the Galatians, they need to be reminded who had hindered them, who had bewitched them, who had persuaded them to go back to the bondage and dump the, what have Christ have made straight to the bin. So, to simplify, the message for this afternoon is the realization of the true value of the gospel ensures the message of the cross is animated in the lives of believers preventing us from drifting away from the faith. In Filipino, ang pagkatanto sa tunay na halaga ng Ebanghelyo ay tumitiyak na ang mensahe ng krus 
ay nagbibigay buhay sa buhay ng mga mananampalataya na siyang pipigil sa atin sa pagtalikod sa pananampalataya. That is the lasting effect of the gospel truth, brothers. It will keep a believer from the disappointment of this word. And as a way of warning, not that we will no longer experience any hardship, uh, not that we will uh, have uh, troubles or afflictions in our life, in our family, in the society, or even in the church. It will come. It will be there. But rather, it will preserve our faith to the last until the return of the one who promised that he will be back. At the same time, it serves as a warning to those who acts as a blind guides that they will surely felt the wrath and judgment, the severity of the judgment of our Lord. We can see a great contrast here between the error and the truth. In this passage, it was clearly portray portrayed. So therefore, a believer ought to confront another gospel. But on the opposite uh, occasion or on the opposite side, we must take comfort to the truths of the gospel and to the promise of Jesus Christ. The first sub-point is confronting errors. Believer ought to confront a different gospel. Note that Paul uses the athletic terminology from verse 7, run, where the runner is supposed to run on track and runs well. There will be no athlete who competes just to be there, just to be present, but to win, to participate, and to come out victorious. However, most often, athletes uh, inefficiently run. If not, they totally go to the wrong and opposite direction. And this is what exactly happening to the converts of Galatia. One may say that this is just a trivial issue, a petty one, out of uh, apostle. No need to make it big, but these errors are doctrinal. It has doctrinal implication not only to the lives of the believers, but on the way they worship the Lord. On how they present and live to the true message of the gospel. He mentioned circumcision on this particular passage. This is not just a cultural separation or a ceremonial rite of being a Jew, but this promotes backs to the old religion, to the old ways based on salvation through the works in obedience to the law of Moses. In chapter 1, verse 6, a mind-blowing statement was thrown uh, to them by the apostle. As he said, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. And with a similar accusation, Apostle Paul asked in our passage, Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Sino? His inquiry, the primary reason of his inquiry is not to know who had persuaded them away from the truth. For what reason? He doesn't know who they are or he doesn't need to know who they 
are a hastily scold uh, to this troublemaker. That's why he wants to know, not necessarily. Paul's primary uh, reason in his inquiry is for the Galatian brethren to revisit their very foundation, to check what they have begun or what they have uh, managed uh, to earn from the beginning through Christ. The truths that they have received from the beginning, from the teaching of the apostles, from the scripture itself. Those foundational truths is the central theme of the scripture. Christ alone. We heard this morning from the preaching of Pastor Mon that uh, the, uh, the biblical theology of fall from uh, Old Testament until the New Testament points out to the uh, works of Jesus Christ. So, those foundational truths are central theme, theme of the scriptures. It is not only be seen to the first four books of the New Testament or uh, the gospel, but it is also prominent in the Pauline literature and wildly used by the rest of the apostle, even the Old Testament points out on this, they are represent or they are uh, the shadows of uh, uh, the coming Messiah. So the point here is the surety of one's salvation is because of the Lord through the finished work of Christ on the cross. The surety of one's salvation is because of the Lord through the finished work of Christ on the cross. Brethren, no matter how a man work for the betterment of humanity, he may win a Nobel Prize, but it will not be sufficient for his salvation, for the betterment of his soul. No amount of philanthropical works can keep someone away from the gravity and consequence of the sin. No matter how religious one can be, it will not save him from God's wrath. A legalistic approach or application of one uh, to the uh, very word of the Holy Writ will not make him holy. Taste this. Uh, sorry, do not taste this. Do not eat this. Do not remember this. It will not keep him away from the wrath of the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, it says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. This is the message which Paul has received as well and is being proclaimed to the Gentiles, to the ends of the earth. And if I continue to read, it says, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture that he was buried, that he was raised, and on the third day in accordance with the scripture. No one can add anything else or deduct something from Jesus in regards with salvation. Christ is sufficient and necessary for salvation. If we had something else, we lose the whole cross. People, this is only by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, salvation is made possible. For those who do not really understand yet, the gospel take time and effort to understand it because even you attend services week in week out bible studies day in day out scripture reading every night every morning 
But if you miss the cross, you will miss everything and everything will go to waste. Brothers, even you are immersed in the ministries of the church, but unless you know by your heart that the service you are doing is for the Lord, because of what He has done to you, He has done to us, then you will burn out. We will fall away in service. We may proceed and stay in the ministry, but for how long? If we are treating that we are doing it because it feels good, if we are helping, if we are doing the works of the church because eyes are looking at us, it will not last. You will be burned out. So brethren, let us be reminded week in and week out through the ordinary means of grace by hearing the preached word, by observing the sacraments and even in our personal quiet times that this is all about Christ and what he have managed to do in obedience to the will of the Father. Not because we are good people, not because we are worthy in Luke. Jesus said that we are unworthy servants. Not that we haven't made as much as the apostle or our pastors or our brethren that we need to match that no but we are not worthy to serve him but he, we were given privilege to serve him although we are not worthy the most highest paid job in the world today is anesthesiology. Because of their expertise in the field and extensive training before they have obtained the license to practice. It's a very simple job. You just inject the anesthesia to the patient and it's done. But it's not. Anesthesiologists have to assess the risk of anesthesia from the dosage depending of, on the age group of the patient, medical contradictions, etc. But in plain English, a specific and adequate anesthetic must be administered to the patient. No more, no less. Less dosage, it means that the patient will be awake in the, in the operating table or he will feel or she will feel the pain during the procedure. Too much, it is proven to be fatal. In other words, this is the same with the gospel. No more, no less. Christ Jesus alone, cross alone. Let me read you Mark Dever in his uh, book, The Message of the New Testament. He says, Any false teaching that offers something other than the true remedy, the forgiveness and new life we have in Christ by faith, must be avoided with all our might. Get rid of those who wish to introduce the law. Paul says in uh, Galatians 4.30, After all, a little yeast works uh, through the whole lamp, sorry, works through the whole batch of dough. And the church, as the holy leaven loaf, unleavened loaf, 
must get rid of the leaven that quickly spoil the whole batch. So brethren, let us pray that the Lord may found us faithful, not only on the final a day when He will return. Let us pray that uh, rather He might find us obedient to the truth daily in confronting every errors that we may bump in. May it be outside or inside the church. Secondly, comforting truths. A believer must take comfort, comfort from the gospel truths. Note in uh, verse 10 of the passage, Paul was confident. The same confidence he showed in his prayer to the Philippians, knowing that the one who started it was the Lord. It reads in Philippians chapter 1, verse 4 and following, I thank God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayers with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began good work in you will bring it into completion at the day of Jesus Christ. That level of confidence showed by Paul is edifying, especially when the legalist troubles them. When the people tells them to do this and do that, follow this and follow that, do not eat this, do not drink that, it's a very comforting message from the apostle himself. There is no weapon that can succeed against God. His immutability is in display in Paul's theology. These unnamed false teachers are in no match against what has been prepared and declared before the very foundation of the earth. That's why in uh, the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians on the chapter 6, the armor of God, they say it will able to stand against the scheme of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So we can say that these unnamed false teachers, though they're in persons of a real human, perhaps a Judaizer, perhaps a Pharisee, but their enemy here is not just mere human. It is instituted by the devil himself, by the ancient serpent, Satan, which wants to frustrate God's will. Paul himself is still being persecuted because of the offending message that he bears. This is not new. The disciple has been warned by Jesus in the 16th chapter of John. He said, I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away, that they will put you out of synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. Would you imagine that? People who destroy things that they are doing this cause in service of the Lord. Those who 
troubles the Galatian, in particular the believers of the biblical times, does this thinking they are serving the true God. On the contrary, the same persecutor of Paul cannot force these Gentile converts to obey the law and turn away from the gospel. Why? They are not Jew. However, they capitalize from Jesus being a Jew, incorporating good works and rituals, in this case, not to deny Jesus, but to proclaim a different Christ. The passage that we have earlier read in Deuteronomy chapter 8, in verse 19 it says, And if you forget the Lord, your God, and go after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. They are still using the very scripture to persuade these converts. What a deceitful persuasion they do. Again, let me read you now from the Apostle Peter. Peter, uh, he has something to say about the teaching of Paul. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and following, it says, And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him. Well, this is just a validation of Paul being a apostle or a true apostle from uh, the mega apostle himself, Peter. And uh, as to continue the passage, it says, as he does in all his letters, when he speak of them, of these matters. So what, is, what, what are these matters? Uh, these matters are the eternal thing, the coming judgment. So when he speaks in them of this matter, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do to other scripture. Destruction in Strong's perishing and that what Paul's write or have written in our text. The one who is troubling you will bear the penalty. It is the one who's pers who persuades the believers to fall from the error who will bear the punishment. Those who teach other gospel and persuading the elect will bear the penalty, not those who are being persuaded. They haven't fallen yet. They haven't seen yet. You see, they do not fall away from the truth, but they are just being troubled. It's like a fume of a heavy smoke is being uh, blown to their face in order for them not to see what's in front of them, but to look back, but to listen to the whispers. Whispers of who? Martin Luther says, He may be sure that those are the works of Satan. Most of the, oh, sorry, the point here is the Lord preserves his saints from falling away. A true believer with the correct understanding of the gospel with the complete obedience to the truth, 
will surely be preserved and not fall away. You know, most of the encouraging person that we have heard perhaps uh, during a testimony or a natural conversation, uh, those person in faith, most often they had a colorful past or they have a extreme lifestyle before their conversion. But despite of that, the protection of the Lord was with them, preserved them until they reached the point that the gospel made an effect in their lives, in their hearts. Sometimes I wonder how good Christ was in, all, in my life, preserving me. Those who knows me will just smile if they see me now talking because of my past. So the same preservation that was made to all of us, how colorful may be or not, how extreme or plain may be our past, Christ had preserved us from sin or from uh, yung pagmamataas that I'm a good person or from sin that I'm a sinner. I don't have any chance. Wala na akong pag-asa. Brethren, the Lord preserved us. Like the sea turtle, the Pacific Salmon also uh, lays back his or, 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 or breeds back where they were born. This phenomena until now is not completely being understood. The science call this uh, natal homing. When the sea turtles and the Pacific Salmon goes back uh, to their birthplace and give birth. We don't know how exactly they can go back, but science says they manage by navigating through celestial bodies like stars, or perhaps the magnetic uh, uh, polars or magnetic impulses of the Earth Nobody knows. But if this species does that to ensure their survival, the benefit of this is they will have a weatherproof or a good environment because they were born on that place. For sure, their offspring will survive. There will be no natural predators, perhaps, on that place in order for their eggs or their little ones, when, they, when it hatch, survives. The point is, if God allows and designs for these marine animals to be like that, how much more for us? How much more for the people who were created in the image of the Lord, in the image of God. What kind of preservation He will do for us? It is to be expected to be more, not only to the physical survival, but as well to the spiritual preservation. Faithfuls are captive and take confidence to the Lord, to His work, looking to Jesus. As the scripture says, the founder and perfecter of our faith. So brethren, to challenge us, 
Let us not limit the power of the gospel by incorporating our achievements and sacrifices. Let the truths of the gospel alone penetrate our souls, the souls of the dying men, in order for them to be saved. Because the one who can save them already made the ultimate sacrifice. He already won the victory over death and made the promise that he will come back. He already won the, the victory. Not the absurdity, absurdity of our benevolence, but the extravagance of his love. Neither the significance of our sacrifices, but the pureness and greatness of his. Not the folly of our righteousness, but the acceptable righteousness of God. We perhaps have heard Thomas Cranmer, one of the leaders of English Reformation and Archbishop of Canterbury. He helped the case of King Henry VIII, the case of his annulment to his wife in order for him to marry his mistress and to defy directly the papal authority. But two monarchs have passed. The daughter of the then king sits on the throne, Queen Mary I, or known in the history as Bloody Mary, with the grudge brought Cramner into trial for treason, found guilty, and sentenced death. Cranmer made several recantations before his execution in hopes that he will get pardon, in hopes that instead of being burned in a stake, he will be uh, brought into exile, perhaps. But on March 21, 1556, a final recantation to be made in public was scheduled before Cramner's execution. Instead of recanting, he found courage and renounced all his recantation, his previous recantation, and was burned in the stake as a martyr for the cross of the cross. Here, we saw a classic example of human weakness caused by pressure and threat of death. But until the end, by the very last moment, the Lord made him persevere and stand for the truth. To conclude, let me read you Martin Luther concerning the book of Galatians. He says in his commentary, Let every Christian, therefore, when he is terrified and afflicted, learn to cast away false persuasion by which Satan had whispering. He had conceived. But to Christ, the Savior of mankind, which said, that he came into the world to save sinners, to comfort such as are in terror, anguish, and desperation, and to preach deliverance to the captives. Let us learn in this wise and comfort ourselves through, through faith in temptation and in persuasion of false doctrine. Else, the devil will either seduce us by his ministers or kill us with his fiery darts. Therefore, believers must take 
comfort to the work of Jesus and this promise to the faithful. Let us close in prayer. Father in heaven, we again once uh, come before your holy throne asking for forgiveness to the futility of our minds and our hands that uh, we may rebel against you in, from time to time. May only your word penetrate us and uh, uh, abide in us in order for us uh, to enjoy uh, the reap the benefit of your grace. Father, we thank you for this afternoon and uh, uh, may only be your word be seen in our lives. The way we talk on the uh, meditation of our hearts and minds, all for your cause. In Christ's precious name, amen.